Good morning, church. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. The Lord gave me a message about relationship. We need to talk about this because there are so many broken homes. Talk of partner, your business partners, and uh, talk of friends. Broken relationship. So therefore, let's talk about that and see what the Lord will lead us to today. I will take you to the book of First Corinthians, chapter thirteen. First Corinthians, chapter thirteen. If I speak in the tongues of men or angels, but do not have love, I'm only resounding gong. Raised to resounding gong. You know what it means? If I have the gift of prophecy, you can see vision. You can see what is to come, what will happen in future. If you have the gift of prophecy and can see mysteries, it is beyond human. And all knowledge, if I have faith that can move mountain, a faith that can move mountain, I mean, think about that. But do not have love. I'm nothing. Absolutely. That is, you have faith that can move mountain, and you have no love. You are nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to ashes, that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Mm. Love is the greatest of all. Mm. If you go to verse 4 there, you say, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy. Oh my God. So in me, those who are envious, they lack love. Who have love among us then? I did again verse 4. Love is patient. Are you really patient? We are patient. That is why we are where we are today. If we are not patient from church one, we will have abandoned the church. The first church was destroyed by, by rain. The second church was destroyed by storm. The third church was destroyed. But with patience, we believe, we'll be somewhere. Now, the Bible is saying love is patient. Love is kind. We understand kind. Anybody can pretend to be kind. But to be patient, it's very difficult to be patient. Now we are in a generation without law and without patience. Everything you are using is as a result of impatience. You want to eat, you have gas cooker, poop, 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 poop. You want me? Yeah. As a result of impatient traffic everywhere. It does not envy, that is love, does not envy. What could make one envy? When you are not content. So some people now, as we are sitting down, they are looking around to see some style of air. Oh my God. Some attire, beautiful attire. Some as we are talking about the, the car park, oh, this car is beautiful. I must get it. I must get it. Hallelujah. Yes, you say, it does not boast. That is love. When I say relationship, relationship exists where there is love. Relationship exists where there is what? We are not talking of the kind of relationship today where a little trouble, you quit. 
you can't stand the consequences unless when the goings are good, you, you are there, I'm your friend. Not that kind of relationship. Relationship exists where there is love. Love cannot exist without relationship. Here we are today, from east, from south, from west, different country gathered together here. Even though some of us pretend to be here today, maybe you are looking for your business partner, that is why you are here. Some are looking for, hey, how are you? Fine. Oh, I'll be looking for, mm, they, they say that church do deliver people. I will be here today sitting down. When any first lady they deliver, I'm going to marry the lady. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, different reason. You know the reason why you're here? All over the world. We gather together. This is why the Lord said, Christianity is a relationship. Tell your neighbor. Christianity is a relationship. You come from here, you come from there. Even the funny thing, sometimes you sit with your, your gardener. After here, a gardener that cannot even look at your face, but it's just side by side with you. Tell your neighbor, Christianity is a relationship. <laughs> Even sometimes when you look around, you see the managing director, the head of the, the company, is an usher, clean the church. Why a gardener also usher, clean the church all together? Where can this happen? Christianity is a relationship. This is why we don't have a special seat for anyone here. Everybody, when you look at what you sit, it's what everybody here sit. When you first come, you sit in front. First come, first serve. Because Christianity is a relationship. It's not a religion. Where we prepare a seat, when you are not there, even your children can take over the seat. It's not a religion. Love cannot exist without relationship. And relationship exists where there is war, where there is love. Can you see where I sit? Look at the person sitting beside you, or behind you, or in your front. You will find that it may be someone out there who cannot look at you? Maybe someone who clean your shoe. But because Christianity is a relationship, yes. Yes. As Christians, we should realize that all about relationship originates from God. All about relationship originates from where? From God. Relationships begins with God and overflows to people. As a Christian, our relationship with friends, our relationship with relations, our relationship with others must remain an integral part of God's original relationship. If your relationship is not from there, then we can talk of might and power. That is, your relationship with others. Other can be friends, can be relation, can be family, can be church membership your pastor, your this, your dad, others. 
must remain an integral part of God's original relationship. Even in the face of adversity, long suffering, affliction, just name them. Because relationship originally come from God. You have no power to quit unless God releases you because of consequences. This man duped me. This man, I mean, insult me. This man embarrassed me. Because of that, you quit. Without God releases you, you quit because of trouble. That is not God's relationship. The Bible says we must stay put and get used to the situation in order to obtain spiritual maturity. We must what? We must stay put and get used to the situation. Whatever happened between you and your friends. Stay put, get used to the situation in order to obtain spiritual growth and maturity. After all, spiritual growth is a function of obedience to God. Just as physical growth is a function of time and intellectual growth it's a function of learning. So we must stay put, getting used to the situation. You cannot quit from relationship unless God releases you. Once trouble comes, you disconnect yourself, you quit. No matter the trouble, no matter what happens, you quit. But the same friend may be your Messiah tomorrow or oh, Messiah of your children. That you are wrong today does not mean you cannot be a Messiah tomorrow. That you are not perfect today does not mean you cannot perfect tomorrow. You keep running from this, running from that. Many of us today, when you enter many offices, you find that the head of the company is someone who has injured you in the past and you need help. By the time you knock the door, you say the first, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The way we live a relationship is the same way we will enter into the new relationship. Jesus said in the book of John 20, 23, if you forgive the sin of anyone, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sin of one, they are retained. If you leave a relationship embittered, respectfully, hatred, fight, you, you leave the relationship. You will enter the next relationship with the same attitude. You will enter the next relationship with the same attitude. The unforgiveness you hold for your former relationship will hinder your future. It is impossible to establish a healthy relationship with a person who had left a relationship and be touched. He left the relationship because of hatred, it is impossible.
to establish a healthy relationship with such people, even though he or she may claim to have forgiven, it was not forgotten. It was not forgotten. You may claim to have forgiven him or forgiven your boss, forgiven your former friends. It was not forgotten. Love forgets wrong so that there is hope for future. As a Christian, take note of this way of exhortation. If you are in the place where God wants you to be, the devil will do everything to dislodge you. I mean, to displace you out of the relationship with people there. Anything close to Jesus receives devil attack. Either marriage, and that is marriage from God, or business, or church, or just name it. If you are in the place where God wants you to be, the devil will do everything to dislodge you. It's a sign. When devil know that you are in a place where God wants you, this is your destiny in your hand. It will fight you with all he has to dislodge you, to displace you out of relationship with people there. By thinking I'm out of touch, you are giving the devil a chance. I'm out of touch. When you are later touched, you begin to misjudge yourself. Ah, I'm a Christian now. Why should all this happen to me? Anything can happen. Devil want to uproot men and women from the place where God planned them. Where God plans you. They will want to approach you. When you finally get to where God wants you to be, devil will do everything. But for you to stand devil, you must not think that you are out of touch. When it comes, you know it is sign. When attack comes in your marriage, Remember this message. Yes, this must be marriage. God want me. That attack is to displace you out of relationship. To dislodge you out of the relationship. But it happened to many today that are married and remarried. 70% of home today keep divorcing and divorcing and divorcing. I pray you see that the attack you are going through is an object that separates impurities. Tell your neighbor, the attack I'm going through, the situation I'm in, is an object that separates impurities. Are you a believer? If yes, whatever situation you are going through right now is an object that separates impurities. It's a refiner of character. It's a builder of character. So what situation are you going through? Are you sick? That you are a Christian does not mean you cannot sick. A Christian may be sick in body and yet a friend of God. 
are you poor? That you are a Christian does not mean you cannot face hardship. A Christian may be poor, and yet a candidate of heaven. I ask God to strengthen you so that you can praise God and not complain. I ask God to strengthen you so that you can press on when it seems all is over. That is, your situation as a Christian is an object that separates impurities. It's a refiner of character. It's a builder of character. Your belief is because uh, you are a Christian now, you are out of touch. If your relationship with your neighbor, with your friend, still remain an integral part of God's original relationship. I told you, relationship begins with God and overflows to you. Any relationship that begins with God comes from God does not quit unless God releases you. You are released to leave that relationship. You are released to leave that marriage. Leave the marriage you hear from God. Not because of situation in the marriage. We don't leave marriage because of situation in the marriage. We leave marriage because God said leave. We don't leave business because of trouble. We have to leave the business because God wants us to leave. But look at your life today. Everything you have left behind, you have many business you have done in the past. You left many business partners because trouble come because they, you left the place. No, we don't leave relationship. In the face of adversity, we don't leave unless God releases all. This is why today you can't get any good relationship again. Because you left this one because of hatred. And the new relationship you are going to have, that hatred will continue to follow you. Healing must take place. That is why today, when you see a woman that left home because of fight, disagreement, misunderstanding. The one he will marry tomorrow, that trouble, that others will continue to follow. The same thing he left behind will follow him. The way we leave a relationship is the way we enter into the new relationship. Nearly 99% here find themselves guilty of this offense. You left your former business because of trouble. You are not the author of relationship. It is the relationship that overflow from God that come to you. It, that relationship that continues. If you want God to involve in your relationship, you must carry him along. You must follow the active. You must follow the relationship from him. It must be connected. You can see what's happened today. You are looking for the best. You can see what you have found now today. Love forgets wrongs so that there is hope for future. The only way Christian character grows is by facing and dealing with problems and difficulties. Tell your neighbor. The only way I can grow is by facing and dealing with problems and difficulties. That is the only way you can grow. But you are running for the very thing that will bring strength, that will promote you. Without difficulty and problems, you cannot be promoted. 
Those are tests. You are looking for a little problem, you will get a little promotion. Big problem, big promotion. The trials and difficult circumstances we face are for our obedience to God. Every time you want to hear breakthrough, when you are sick, it is time to say, Jesus, because you don't want to seek. If you are not sick, how will you appreciate your good health? Tell your neighbor, if I'm not sick, how will I appreciate my good health? If you have never been sick, you will live a very bad life. There's nothing you cannot eat. If you have never been poor before, you cannot manage the wealth. When it comes, it is when you are poor, you know how to manage the wealth. It is the experience we learned from that hard time that will actually give us management sense when finally the wealth comes. The situation you are in, because I know you are in a situation, because there is no crystal. <laughs> no crystal. You will get to heaven to see such a crystal. Because the Bible says, in this world, there will be trouble. Share up. I have overcome. He said to you, I pray your faith will not fail. Me, there is war coming. As a Christian, whatever situation you are in, see it as object that separate impurities. To separate impurity me, when you face problem as a Christian, you pray the more, you fast the more. You call God the more. You know God the more. You appreciate God the more as a Christian. That is that separate impurities to refine your character. A smoker, by the time he gets to the doctor, the doctor will say, no, you have cancer. You say, doctor, what is the cause? Ah, you're a smoker. And I'm seeing you in five days, you will die. Huh? Doctor, what do I need to do? Stop smoking. No, 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 it's over. I have decided. What separate impurity? Cancer. Whatever you are going through, very hard to call it friend. Your situation is very, very hard to say, it's my friend, what I'm going through. Because in the actual sense, it's a friend because it's an object to draw you closer to God. We are separating impurities so that God's character in us can continue to grow. Rise up and let us pray. Ask God to give you courage to hope and not give up. Prayer. Pídele a Dios ahora que te dé el aliento necesario para no rendirte. Demande a Dios de vous donner courage de ne jamais abandonner. Say, Lord Jesus. Señor Jesús. Give me courage. Dame aliento. Enough. Bastante. Enough. Suficiente. To hope. Para no rendirme. And not give up. No rendirme. Prayer. Ore. Priez et demandez à Dieu assez de courage pour espérer et ne jamais abandonner. Priez. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ask God to strengthen you to praise him and not complain, prayer.
strengthen me to praise you because you need strength to praise God and not complain. Priez et demandez à Dieu le, la force de le louer et de ne pas se plaindre. Pide a Dios que te dé la fuerza para no rendirte, para no quejarte. Ahora. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. En el poderoso nombre de Jesucristo. As a Christian, whatever situation you are in, because that situation separates in purity. Can't you hear Paul? He said, three times. He met the Lord. The Lord said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. What does that mean? He was having torn in his flesh. And he ran to God first time, and God said, no, 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 my grace is sufficient for you. Me, God was using that as a refiner of character. God was using that as a builder of character. Oh my God, I like that. He said, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. When I have pain, then I have peace. I like that. When I'm not happy, then I'm happy. In me, in two sides, both sides. Here is sad, and here is happy. And this, we call it, that's what we call check. For F O I L to check you. You appreciate God more. You need something to make you appreciate what you have. Just like when you see people without lips, you ask yourself, look at this man on the bed. How does he eat? How does he sleep? Cancer all over. But you see yourself, I'm okay. I laugh freely, I talk freely, I move freely, I eat freely. Look at someone, he cannot walk, he cannot eat, he cannot sleep. You say, oh, God, thank you. Just as you see every day, those who are looking for what you have already. As you are looking for something somebody have, so also somebody is somewhere looking for what you have. Yes. See life in that way. You are saying, ah, ah, I've not eaten today. Now you are now seeing someone who has cancer of mouth. And he has money, he has everything. Now to eat now, they have to pass food through somewhere here. Are you not going to say thank you, Jesus? Although I have no food, but I have a passage to, to pass food. Here is a man, he has money, he has everything, but there's no passage to pass. The prayer you need now Ask God to strengthen you, to praise him, and not complain. I want to praise God and not complain. Open your lips, prayer. Demandez à Dieu de vous donner de la force pour le louer et ne pas vous plaindre au nom de Jésus-Christ. Pídele a Dios que te fortalezca, que te fortalezca para no desfallecer y no quejarte en el nombre de Jesús. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. This is the prayer we need at this time. That God strengthen me to keep pressing on. When it seems all is over, strengthen me 
to keep pressing on prayer. Strengthen me to keep pressing on, to keep pressing on when it seems all is over. Continue to pray, demand the Lord Jesus Christ to fortify you, to continue to advance when all seems to be terminated. Televidente, ahora mismo ore para que sea el Señor fortaleciendo para seguir adelante en el nombre de Jesús. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ask God, give me grace, grace enough to stop misjudging myself, no matter the situation. Because my situation does not determine my Christian life. I may be sick, yet I'm a Christian. I may be poor, yet I'm a Christian. I may be in situation, yet I'm a Christian. My situation does not determine my Christian life. Prayer. Continue to pray. Demand to the Lord Jesus Christ to give you the grace, the grace sufficient to stop having a bad judgment of yourself, because your situation does not determine your Christian life. Ore para que el Señor le dé la gracia para parar de juzgarse usted mismo y diga que su situación no determina su vida cristiana en el nombre de Jesús. Continue to pray. Demand to the Lord Jesus to give the grace. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. We believe you have been inspired by the clip you have just watched. Click here to subscribe to witness more of God's power at work in our generation today, and stay up to date with the latest prophecies, deliverances, sermons, and testimonies from the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Emmanuel TV, changing lives, changing nations, and changing the world.